Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. I'm just kind of wrapping my day up here. It's about 5 o'clock Monday, August 19th, about 76 degrees, not bad. The sun's now off my solar collectors, so my batteries are back in the charge mode. They've peaked and they kind of, I guess, when, when you don't have enough current flowing into them, they get to the point where they go into more of a charge mode instead of a maintain mode. Um, a few things before I get to the 200X pretending to be a 185. Something quick on the China Quad. I had done some reading on this thing on the internet. So, my first CDI unit was this melted guy and I looked at it and I said oh well it must have leaned against something and melted then I was kind of looking at that hole and wondering if something did in fact lean against it and cause that or if it blew up so then I was thinking maybe battery power does go to the CDI so I hooked um, to ground right through hooking up to the carburetor here so one lead to ground the other one and I checked all of these and none of those are hot and um, if I wanted to start it right now I just plug the good CDI in it and uh, and turn it over and shoot fire right up there's not an issue with it starting this is the other one that died if you kind of look at it, where the plug's a little cattywampus in here, maybe this is just an issue of uh, crappy quality control. Anyway, tonight I am going to order yet another spare CDI, and I'm going to make sure I get the uh, the Jantel. I'll pay the extra. I think it was a couple of bucks extra to get the Jantel. So um, I guess that concludes this thing. I mean, I gotta put an air filter on it. Figuring out what I want to do with the wiring, whether I want um, to really go through it. I should put a um, cutoff for the battery and some uh, some fuses. Kind of sucks to to leave everything hooked up, and you know, some mouse chews a wire somewhere and causes a short, which. Uh, you know makes the wire melt into the gas tank and the next thing you know you got a shed that burns down and depending on what goes if it's in here and it catches fire it's got the potential of getting the house even there it could uh, get the house so I, I, I should really if, if I am gonna do it I should do it right um, and by the way, to see somebody do it right, if one goes to Bronco Carl's channel, he's doing a bunch of wiring. He um, is doing a conversion from a V12 to a, um, a Cummings diesel. And I think he's doing it in a Ford. Um, and he's got a lot of wiring he's got to do, obviously, um, to do that. Anyway, back to this rig. You know... Um, I don't know if I put up the initial videos of this guy when I bought it and how it was full with the engine and everything else. I, I, don't, I don't know if I had put all those initial ones up. There was a period of time where I shot some videos and I had planned on getting on YouTube and I just I just didn't do it. So I'm, I'm not sure, once again, if I put, put those videos up or not. Um... Just quickly, I bought this thing. This came from somewhere around Walden, New York. I think, yeah, I think she's from Walden. Um, guy owned it. And uh, I think he used to do motorcycle repairs for a living. Um, and he put it together from a couple of different bikes. It's a 200X frame. And what he did was he put a 200E on it, hence the electric start. Um, I took the 200E off, and I'm putting on a, I think that's 185. 
Um, the 200E is an electric start, the 185 is a pull start. Um, the 185 is a touch smaller, though I seem to be having more trouble getting it in here than he had with the uh, 200E for some reason. I would think a 200E and a 185 would be more or less mount wise exactly the same. I don't seem to be running across that. As a matter of fact, I put some uh, time into um, the motor mounts today. I have to finish grinding them. One could only grind them for so long, then they start to get hot. I should probably um, use a stationary grinder, especially for going around these outer beds and all. But anyhow, they're progressing. So I'm making the motor mounts. Um, putting it together. The alignment looks pretty good between the motor and the chain, though my chain's really loose. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it back enough. This is how you uh, tighten the chain on these things. You kind of loosen this bolt up and uh, loosen these guys, loosen the front one and pull it backwards. Or I might have to move it forward and take a link out or a half a link out and, and work on it. Um, I don't know if you guys are impressed with wiring, but how's that for, um, for being creative? I guess he, uh, you know, had a lamp or something that didn't need wires on it, so he uh, decided to do this uh, cob job. I have to sort through it. I'm going to initially try to wake this thing up on the harness that goes to the 200E. Um, if you look at the wires that the harness is expecting, um, it's expecting two hots to go into the rectifier. And where's the rectifier on this rig? I don't see a rectifier. Normally they, they hang. Oh, there it is. So, um, under here, that's the regulator and the rectifier. So you got, you got two wires. I just won't use those. And then you got, this is the um, AC, the power for the CDI unit. I mean, this is the trigger for the CDI unit. So I think, I think this wire harness will work. If it doesn't, um, the wire harness that went with this motor was the um, DTM Melissa wire harness from over there. I'll just uh, I'll just smash that on here and I'll use that wire harness. Um, he seemed to like tape. He must have got a good deal on it on Harbor Freight or something. Because he, uh, he taped the hell out of this rig. Um, so that's the wire harness, the carburetor. I mean I'm going to put it on there but it, it looks like it's tight. I might end up having to change this intake manifold. But even with that, this carburetor, this looks like it's going to be tight here. Um, for whatever reason, this motor appears to be sitting more upright, more, you know, the head is more backwards than the one that was in here. Once again, I'm still not quite understanding that. Um, shift position. Um, looks halfway decent. The exhaust, I you know, I haven't fit that yet to see if I have any kind of trouble. I guess all of this is kind of surprising me a bit because once again, he did have a 200E motor on here, and he was riding it. I mean, it was alive. Um, I got it. It had no compression because he ran it without an air filter, and I don't, I don't have the head handy right this second. Or I'd show you how the uh, intake valve was all submerged. It, it actually consumed... Actually, I think it consumed the valve. Because the valve looked smaller. And once it consumed the valve, it started to sink into the head. Um, and it got to the, to the point where, where even if you completely release the valve adjuster, um, the valve was not closing all the way and sealing properly. 
So this guy here, what do I have left to do? Um, I need to hook those two up, no big deal. Um, I already plugged that in. So the wire harness, if it's gonna work, it's more or less there, except once again, those two white connections. Um, shifters on, that's tight. I gotta put a bolt on each side for the pegs. I gotta mount the carburetor, which might be problematic, because once again, it appears as if I have a spacing issue here. As a matter of fact, it is gonna be problematic. It doesn't look like it's gonna fit. I might have to change that manifold. Um, the motor just doesn't really look like it could go forward much. I'm really surprised that my, uh, I'm having such troubles with the configurations. I think when I bought this bike, I paid somewhere around 154, 175, 180. I think it was under 200, but I think it was more than 150. For some reason, I, I'm remembering a strange number, like 185, 190, some something like that. It, it was a major part of 200. And I looked at it and I said, ah, I got the plastic, I got the tires, you know, there's a quasi running engine on it and all that. I think if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't have uh, I wouldn't have bought it, or I would have tried to beat the price down a little more, or if I did, I probably should have turned it right into parts and not not fold around with it so much. Because one of the problems you run into, whether you're messing with this guy, where somebody uh, did their own thing, or you're messing messing with this, right? You know, I mean, excuse the analogy, but when when you have this kind of situation, if I had to describe what you're getting into, it's like uh, getting drunk and being in a in a friend's house with a lot of other people, and uh, going to the bathroom and then trying to work your way back to where you thought you remember sleeping, but you don't quite know. And uh, you can find yourself climbing into somebody else's bed. And uh, though it could turn out okay, right, depending on how you define okay, it could also turn out very, very bad when you uh, climb into bed with the wrong person and uh, they don't react well to it. Be it they don't react well or their better half don't react well. Or... Uh, you find out you climbed into bed with some kid who wets his bed, right? So, generally speaking, messing with somebody else's project, whether it's an engine swap or a non-runner like that China Quad, think of it as uh, getting drunk and uh, climbing into the wrong bed. Best case, best case, you, uh, you, you know, you got no problems. You get the thing running, everything's good. Worst case, somebody shoots you, right? So be careful. Be careful whose bed you climb into and be, ca be careful whose project you try to bring back from the dead. All right, folks, I've been rambling for about 13 minutes. So I'll let you go. Don't forget, live, love, and have a great time. Don't get drunk and get into the wrong bed. It could cost you your life or your manhood or your womanhood, depending on uh, who's watching this video. Um, tires down, handlebars up. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Horde. Thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, and watching my videos. Take care.